Hey church, wanted to give us our midweek update of all things going on in the life of Crossgates United Methodist Church. First of all, I wanted to say thank you and thanks be to God for a beautiful Easter resurrection time together. Um, what a beautiful expression of your faithfulness and God's faithfulness um, and having us come back together and moving forward. Uh, remember that starting this Sunday, we are going to allow um, a limited number of people to come together for Sunday school. Um, I still hope and expect and, and ask that y'all get out there and get your vaccines so that by Memorial Day, we can remove um, any of the other um, protocols that we have regarding the number of people in the classrooms. So again, this Sunday, um, starting this Sunday, we will allow 12 people into come here, Faith. You can come in here and be in the uh, in in the update. No, she says no. She doesn't want to do it. Um, we uh, so starting this Sunday, the eleventh, we will um, have a, a maximum of twelve people in a Sunday school room. If you're not all vaccinated, if you're all vaccinated, y'all can um, do the, um, come back together uh, completely. Um, no, no protocol restrictions. Just make sure you wear your masks when you're moving around the hallways and when we meet for worship. Um, the next thing I wanted to give y'all an update. Y'all remember several months ago, uh, we reported that the church had been a victim of some mail theft and how um, someone had gotten into our uh, mail outside in the mailbox and had stolen some um, tithe checks, some some giving checks. And we reported it to federal authorities, we reported it to the post office, and we reported it to the bank, we reported it to Brandon Police. Well, Robin just found out a few days ago that the Department of Justice has filed charges uh, against seven people in Maryland. That, that was the, um, the federal grand jury uh, returned it up there of these seven people traveling around the country um, stealing checks that were primarily targeting churches. It's a very interesting um, indictment. Um, and if you want to look it up, if you just search for six foreign nationals and a bank employee facing federal indictment in Maryland, even if you just search for six foreign nationals and a bank employee, you can find the press release. And apparently... These, um, this group of people were able to obtain more than $700,000 in stolen um, money, stolen checks that were in the mailbox waiting to be picked up by churches. Um, and they had, a, they had a person inside a bank, um, I'm guessing one of the larger banks, that was facilitating all of this and allowing them to deposit them and then cashing them out. So um, I just wanted y'all to give y'all that follow-up that the church wasn't um, necessarily a victim of fraud. Regrettably, it was about six or seven members of our church who had their checks stolen out of our mailbox. And so again, thankfully, uh, with Robin's diligence and the internal controls that we have here in our office about counting, checking, and then our, our new database that verifies so that you can see what monies um, that we have received um, that, are, that you have donated. So again, that's why we send those statements out every month so that y'all can know where we are and where we think you are. So again, just completely fascinating that this was all the way from Florida to Maryland to Tennessee to North Carolina. Um, it, it, it was a big deal, and um, I'm very proud of at least um, how we as a church responded to it. So you never know what you're going to face uh, when you're a pastor of a church, and you, and yeah, <laughs> you just never know. But uh, I wanted to, again, give you all a report and an update on that and how our faithful and prudent work of our church staff was able to help um, not only uncover that, but also... Um, make sure that um, the members who were affected by it knew what was going on. Um, as we conclude this time together, I just want to read a psalm. And, and you know, we're, we're after Easter, right? So, but Easter doesn't end on the day of Easter. Um, Easter is going to carry us through to Pentecost, the day that the Holy Spirit is poured out all over the world. And we're going to start a, um, a thought uh, during these several, 50, these several weeks, these 50 days of the how resurrection unfolded it didn't just happen on one day and then Jesus was ascended that this is actually 
um, resurrection unfolding and Jesus going and meeting with people after his resurrection and about, you know, what did he look like? How did he act? Um, and what are its consequences? What does it mean that the resurrection occurred and, occur and occurred in this way? So we're going to be looking at the Gospels of John primarily, but we're also going to be looking at the epistle of 1 John. It's a beautiful book to read if you ever want to sit down and just read a, a passage of Scripture, a book of Scripture in one reading. I would encourage y'all to, to pick up 1 John. But our psalm for the day is Psalm 133. And it's a calling back to us as a church to continue to live a life together, united together in purpose because of how it glorifies God. So Psalm 133, how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. All this symbolism of oil, by the way. We don't pour oil on each other as a sign of blessing. But back then, it was a sign of true blessing. And oil in the early church was a sign of the Holy Spirit. So how good it is that when we live together as kindred people, brothers and sisters in Christ, how good it is because it's like a blessing of Holy Spirit poured out and it's so much that it runs down over our hair, onto our collars. If you're a man with a beard, it just pours and drips down. It's a beautiful symbol of, of, of God's overflowing blessing, like dew coming down from a mountain, filling the river streams and and, and giving nourishment to people. Cross gates. Resurrection isn't over. We have to live into this thing called resurrection. So I bid you peace for this week. And I call us back to this we've been saying to each other regularly. I see Christ in you. <laughs>